And we are back for a second time this week because even Apple TV doesn't have confidence in its own show. So today is going to be about the prohibition. What can we lie about this time? I just want to point out that yesterday after recording the review, I realized we didn't meet a strong female character. Our heroes didn't encounter someone very strong. No, they encountered two very extremely stupid men with no grips in their brain. Now look, I get it. The Sheriff of Nottingham is the bad guy. Every time. Gisborne, his little henchman, same thing. So I can understand that they would be portrayed as idiots or stupid or, you know, bad. But they were just incompetent completely. Anyway, that's what I wanted to point out. Let's get into the show. All right, so we start off in feudal Japan with the sister. So we are back with Kevin and the group, and they are in England, year 700. As we already know by the title, uh, this is going to be in the Prohibition era. So my guess is we are in the United States, and we have two characters here talking like modern, like very modern, like recent. I'm not even going to say it because I'm going to be accused of racism. Kevin actually calls it gangster talk. Need I say more? They gave the gangsters some of the meat that they brought from 700 England. I mean, I guess that's a good way to bond with prohibitionists. I mean, anti-prohibitionists. So they think that Kevin is babyface. They, the, the gangsters believe that Penelope is Madam Queenie from New York. From Harlem. Um, I'm just, I'm going to leave it there. Look, I will say this. I don't know that much about the Prohibition era. It's never really been something I've been interested in. Sure, I'll watch a documentary here or there. It's interesting to learn that the government would even poison alcohol to kill people drinking alcohol. And the crazy things that people did just to get a buzz on, right? But never really that deep into that era. Madam Queenie... I don't know much about her other than that she's uh, Stephanie St. Clair. Was a real name and uh, was a racketeer. I'm not going to point out the obvious differences between Penelope and Madame Queenie. So Kevin just declared we are in 1929. I do want to bring this here up. I know it's Wikipedia. Not everything can be trusted, but very interesting indeed. After St. Clair retired from the numbers game, she started a new era of her life as an advocate for political reform. You might ask yourself what kind of political reform? Well, in the late 1930s, she met her husband, Sufi Abdul Hamid, known as the Black Hitler. For his anti-Semitic Nazi fashion, of activism. Oh, really? Hamid was a militant activist and was the leader of an Islamic Buddhist cult. Those are two things I didn't think I would ever hear together. St. Clair and Hamid's marriage went downhill quickly when he allegedly had an affair with a black fortune teller known as Fu Futum. Hamid went on to marry Futum, whose real name was Dorothy Matthews, in April 1938. And they founded a Buddhist temple together. It just doesn't compute in my head. It does Islam and Buddhism together and... 
Look, I, I get the Nazi and Islam. That works well together because they were definitely on the same side. Buddhism, I, I don't. Where does that fit in? Very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. So there are two or three characters kind of growing on me. Their acting is actually fairly good, even though that they aren't dwarves, which they should be. But that's beside the point. I'm trying to find good things in this show. You know, the pieces of chocolate through all the shit. So, I, mean, I like this actor. He's he's good. Figuring out the money that they got for the meat is actually worth something. They went on a shopping spree. So this incompetent fool, and he was incompetent because he doesn't know what's going on. He's the leader of the other gang that our gang met. Bumpy Johnson. It's incredibly boring. To be perfectly honest here. You now have Kevin talking about a girl he seems to have liked. Just wow. When will this episode stop? So this is Madam Queenie. Wait, they they actually they hired a dwarf. Why not make the team dwarves then? What is this? They hired two, two of them. What is this? Why couldn't the bandits be dwarves like they originally were if they're hiring dwarves no matter what? Alto has met a fellow artist, and she's been teaching him how to talk in jazz. Would you like to skip scap scat about skate about skate about scap scat skate about skate about sandwich? Yep, and the bandits. Apparently, the portal that wasn't closing to the Middle Ages England, where they were continuously stealing the meat to sell in the Prohibition era, closed, and now Bidelik and Dooley, I believe, is the name are trapped on the other side. Yeah, okay. So she's now letting Alto know that Madam Queenie, the real Madam Queenie, is put out a hit on other time bandits. Now there's a chase. The portal came back, but it's looking a bit weird. The portal reopened and now they're on their way out. What I did notice is that Vikings are behind them. So if this is supposed to be Linda's farm, the monastery that was attacked by the Vikings, they're 93 years too early. They don't understand sleep with the fishes. Now, I might be wrong here. And if I am, I apologize. Let me know down in the comments below if I am wrong with this one. But this guy... Does not look like this guy. Babyface. This guy claims he is babyface. It's so hard being a female leader. They are both upset, I guess, because they mistook both of them as Madam Queenie. It was all just a big misunderstanding, and Madam Queenie just, you know, let them go after encroaching on her territory. Sure. They're back in feudal Japan with the sister, and they're being chased by hunter. No, 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 no. Hold on. What the hell? Like, what in the actual... Huntress grabs the sister, pulls her up, says you're not him, drops her, and leaves, and the answer is... You're not him. <laughs> You don't know me pronouns. You don't know me pronouns. Like what in the actual hell? They had to bring that in, didn't they? Holy crap. And maybe you heard the voice now for Huntress. Back to the Supreme One, Taika Waititi, and his secret project. So Taika Waititi, as God made a few mistakes when he created Earth. Specifically, the humans. So he wants to wipe everything out, have a restart, and make Earth 2.0. I'm wondering if they are setting up 
God to be evil and the evil one to be good. He is going to save humans. I would not be surprised if this is something that happens. Well, this episode had a lot of ups and downs. To be honest, I did enjoy the acting of Alto. I did enjoy the acting of Bidlick. They are two characters that I actually do enjoy in this. Everything else, I liked the era that they were in. I liked learning about Madame Queenie. Definitely going to do an episode on her. Very interesting character. Very controversial. Um, yeah, I lied again about historical facts. Babyface Nelson is now black. But there were also so many, so, so many lows in this episode. Incredible how boring it was setting everything up to there being Vikings in England 700 and that and not in the year 793 to pronouns and a trans demon and now turning God into the evil one trying to get rid of humans and delete the entire earth. I really have no idea where they're going to continue with this. I don't understand it. It's crazy. And it's blasphemous. Like, I'm not one to simply use that. Like, I, I understand. Like, there are shows, there are movies with, you know, gods, demons, whatever else. And some of them I enjoy, and some of them they have quite a bit of liberties taken to them. But this year is just completely... Anyway. I've ranted enough about this episode. This was quite interesting. All of the mistakes... Historical mistakes, so more fodder for my second channel. Anyway, let me know what you thought of the episode, what you think of all the blasphemous, all the ups and downs in this episode. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Whatever floats your boat. And hey, consider subscribing. And if you do that, hit the bell for notifications because that is the only way that YouTube knows that you are interested in watching my videos. Thank you for stopping by, and until next time, take care.